Beijing Olympics marked China's debut onto the international stage, illustrating the dramatic change that China has undergone since the 1980s. In a series of interviews, the Real News senior editor Paul Jay spoke to professor, former political prisoner, and political economist Min Chi Li. Welcome back to the next segment of our interview with Min Chi Li on the current situation in China. Uh, Min Chi, what is happening inside the Chinese Communist Party? We, we understand there is some kind of uh, there's a tremendous amount of pressure that these neoliberal reforms may have gone too far. There's some issue of the Chinese Communist Party's trying to address the inequality, uh, particularly in the countryside. Um, there's a fight against corruption. Every so often we read about a, a major Chinese official has been arrested, occasionally even executed. Uh, wh what is the nature of the, of the fight that's taking place inside the party? Basically, uh, after Deng Xiaoping, there has been a consensus uh, among China's uh, ruling elites, among the party le leadership in terms of that China should move ahead in terms of capitalist development, move ahead in terms of new liberal globalization, as well as in the international stage, not to challenge American hegemony. That's the consensus. We think this consensus, however, under different administration has been different emphasized. So for example, under Jiang Zemin, the previous administration, you had this full speed ahead with privatization and full speed ahead with trade and financial liberalization. And so by the early 2000s, you have this growing social conflict and also you have very serious uh, environmental degradation within China, growing environmental costs. So when this new administration came to stage under Hu Jintao and uh, Wen Jiabao, you have a change in emphasis. There have been some efforts to address the social conflicts, for example, by removing the taxes on the peasants, by increasing some expenditure on uh, rural health care and education, although by no means uh, enough, uh, in my opinion. And there has been some effort to alleviate the environmental cost, although the overall environmental situation in China continue to deteriorate. And despite these minor adjustments, the overall consensus has not been changed. What is the end game here? When they look into the future, what do the leaders of the Chinese Communist Party envision? Is someday do they say they're getting towards some a new kind of socialism? Or do they, they look into the future and just see this managed capitalism for another 100, 200 years? Well, that's that's a remarkable thing about uh, China's move. And uh, as Deng Xiaoping said, you know, you just try to touch the stone and try to cross the river. I think they still follow this policy. They really try to keep the end game ambiguous and so that to please everyone, as far as the official slogan is concerned. But in fact, they are pursuing what they want to pursue. But these guys are old Marxists. I mean, they have to know that a capitalist economy ha is inherently has great social inequality, especially a country of that size. Um, do they have some real plans for dealing with this? Maybe because after 1989, they were convinced capitalism was in fact superior to socialism. That may be part of the reason. And partly, so many things have changed in China, so it's no longer just about ideology, it's also about real material interests. I'm talking about the real material interests for the ruling elites themselves. For example, there are rumors that the, the sons and daughters of various leaders of the Chinese Communist Party now run top Chinese businesses, including some financial businesses that are closely associated with the various uh, transnational corporations. There are rumors that uh, the wife of China's Prime Minister, Wen Jiabao, uh, is in fact uh, the largest jewelry business uh, woman in China. And there are rumors that one of the husband uh, of uh, Wen Jiabao's daughter is among the richest uh, in China. So that gives you some idea about you know, where, where the interests lie. Yeah. But to one extent, is there a mass movement against this neoliberalism? Is, is, it, is, this, is there really oppositional movement or are most people going along with this? Well, you have very many uh, spontaneous mass uh, resistance throughout the country. And some of them are officially reported, some are not. But in terms of the urban workers, you still have lots of resistance movement against the privatization. And in uh, rural areas, you have many spontaneous protests against land privatization. But no, but no, no political organization that would actually threaten the current regime. They have not yet formed a unified political movement, that's correct. But if the China's uh, social conflicts, environmental problems, economic problems continue to uh, develop, 
And if China could not maintain China's current rapid economic growth 10 or 20 years from now, then all of these accumulated problems then would be very serious by then. Well, in the next segment of our, of our interview, let's talk about one of the most serious problems facing China and the world, and that's the climate change crisis. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Min-Chi Lee.